Hello and welcome back and before we get to these cheeky little drives here on the table I think we need to take a little bit of time to learn about perspective. Far be it from me to suggest that in the past when it came to hard drive technology that there was perhaps just a little bit of hyperbole about just what the maximum hard drives were going to be. I think it's important to understand where we've come from in terms of technology and that there was a time that people were actually chuffed to spend nearly two grand on five megabytes of storage. We're talking about a time when not only was Radio Shack a gunning name around and that you were looking at spending two grand on 20 megabytes of storage, but the fact that it didn't include installation in any way. We're talking about an era when they used to throw shade at floppy disks with adverts like this one where you might be lucky enough for just over $5,000 and an extra $3,000 for extra every extra disk to enjoy 10 million bytes of data storage. Now don't get too excited, that is around 0.01 gigabytes. Sometimes it can be really easy to forget just how far things have moved forward when it comes to storage media and just how much we take it for granted. Which brings us back to the subject of today's video. These are SATA 30 terabyte hard drives. They're 3.5 inch drives. They're pretty much the same size as the majority of drives in the market, although I will say when we compare it against this 4TB Seagate drive, things have maybe bulked up a tad. A lot of that's come down to helium, of course, come down to platter displacement, the usage of energy and microwave and heat to effectively add more potential space to the platters inside here. But is it necessarily a good thing? I made a video a while ago about 24 TB and is that too much space? And I said it's like this tongue in cheek. But at this point, 30 terabytes of storage space on this drive, is this bonkers? Is this too many eggs in one basket? Let's review this drive, talk about what it can do, what it can't do, and ultimately whether you should be considering upgrading your storage to 30 terabyte disks. Do you know what? I'm going to place this disc here for the remainder of the video and hopefully me and my waggy elbows are not about to cost me a serious amount of money. Now up until now, when it came to the Seagate Iron Wolf or Exos series of CMR, conventional magnetic recording drives, commercially you're only really looking at 26 to 24 TB with some slight bending of the rules there. Above and beyond that, we have seen data centers enjoying larger drives than that, thanks to innovations within SMR, Shiggle Magnetic Recording, and enhancements in the software management of those drives, allowing to make up some of the gap there that shingle magnetic recording has in losses compared with that of conventional drives like these. These are full CMR drives. They have 10 internal platters. These 10 platters have three terabytes of data storage each inside. And again, it's helium ensuring that those platters remain as steady as possible. It's a lot more complicated than that. And the sealed helium internals are more about stability of the spinning disks as they're getting thinner and thinner and thinner and ensuring that they remain stable and no friction or contact internally with the actuator and less obviously with the access there on the drives. And of course, innovations in how conventional magnetic recording has exceeded beyond that now towards heat assisted magnetic recording HAMR and of course energy assisted and other technology and innovations that have allowed for larger drives to develop. This 10 platter drive has a rotational speed of 7200 rpm and arrives with 512 megabytes of onboard cache. Uh, the performance across both of these drives is pretty similar with 272 megabytes per second reported sequential read over 262 uh, sequential write on the Iron Wolf drive and on the Exos drive 275 over 262 there. Both drives have a 550 terabyte annual workload rating there. That's how much they're 
rated to have in terms of right every single year and indeed both of them arrive with secure erase technology as well to ensure that when you do want to delete the delay data it remains deleted. Now one step beyond that is that the Seagate Ironwolf drive arrives with that data protection service there, their rescue recovery, three years to be precise, included with the drive. We talked about it before, ultimately it means if the drive fails and it's a mechanical failure within that period or even just a simple erroneous deletion, you can contact Seagate for data recovery services. We've tested it ourselves and they did provide that service. But are we even ready in our server rooms to enjoy 30 TB drive? Sure, data center with rack mount server farms bigger than your house might, but what about you with your domestic four bay system? Are you going to be able to enjoy this once these drives are a little bit more affordable? Well, for the most part, yeah. I went ahead and tested this on a bunch of different NAS platforms. Now, again, needless to say, it worked on true NAS and Unraid, they always do, but what about the turnkey NAS solutions? I stuck these inside a few different turnkey NAS solutions and they were seen in every one of them. When I used an Acer Store NAS, it was a, um, a Locker Store system, I took both of these drives, installed it inside the Acer Store and then booted it up for a first time initialization. It allowed me to not only see the drives, create a RAID as normal and take advantage of the full capacity. It wasn't a case of isolated um, LUA, uh, LUNs inside like we saw with the Mac 2 series. This is a single large storage area of 30 terabytes when I stuck them inside a QNAP. The QNAP not only saw them, it allowed me to take advantage of it in a RAID configuration. It even allowed me to benchmark them, something I'll touch on later. And when I stuck them in a Synology, a 2023 series Synology, by the way, because I don't know if you've heard, but the 2025 series from Synology has something of a bonkers uh, methodology towards hard drive compatibility at the moment. But when I stuck it inside a DS923+, Plus. It saw them. It allowed me to create my storage port. It allowed me to create my volume. It allowed me to create a RAID configuration there. It even allowed me to institute and add this drive for drive recovery there. Of course, it stuck warnings in my face all the way along the way, but still, these work right now, at least in my early testing. Now, I say early testing because these are also quite high power consuming drives compared to a lot of domestic drives in the market. Not by a huge amount, but once you add up all the drives, I'm sure it will make a difference. I say, if you add up all the drives, unfortunately, I've only got these two. I wasn't able to do a large scale RAID test with these because I've only got these two drives. But when I did individual benchmarks, both on QNAP and Synology, on the QNAP, it rated them at 268 over 270. And on the case of the Synology, it rated them over 268 over 252. Both respectable numbers, both within their own operating systems. And again, exactly what I would have expected to see, not unlike when we did our testing on the 24 TB drives there. But for the uninitiated, the bigger the drive, the bigger things are like noise and power consumption. Now let's talk about noise first, because it's one of those things that if you don't know, the day you find out that larger hard drives make more noise is a bad day and indeed a bad night's sleep indeed. Now I had these two drives inside that DS923 Plus and then did some deep write activity on those drives. And man alive, you could hear them. The reason I went for that Synology is because it was a plastic chassis. It had the ability for me to uh, lower the fan uh, rotational speed there to ultimately uh, uh, remove as much noise of the NAS as possible so we could focus on the drives. And... <laughs> Now remember, that was with two of these drives. So if you wanted to go bigger, if you wanted to populate an eight bay with these, I hope you're not in the same building as this device or at the least got the thickest walls going because you are going to hear this thing rattling across the room. They're still good drives, they've still got plenty of capacity, but just know that what you might think you might be saving in space in terms of this capacity, you're gonna have to think a little bit about the noise. The same goes with power consumption. Gating the power consumption on these was a little tricky for my setup there. If I had a lot more drives, I could run a RAID setup. And from that, I could also do a lot more of the kind of minus power testing on larger systems where I could work out the base power consumption of the system versus these. With my meager setup, I was able to do some 
let's face it, quite caveman test. I went ahead and used the USB dock and then got a baseline operational power of a 4TB Seagate Ironwolf drive. And then I got a base level uh, power consumption of this moody, so fake WD SSD we used. The reason I went for it is the power consumption of this is almost nothing. And this allowed me to work out that the USB dock was using about a watt of power. So factor that in when you're thinking about the power consumption, the running of that dock, and ultimately the surrounding operation of the drive. So with that in mind, let's talk about the power consumption of these drives. Now, when I had them uh, all set up in the USB dock there, the Ironwolf Pro uh, uh, consumed between eight to 9.5 watts when it was in standby. It wasn't in complete idle or shut down to hibernation mode. I wasn't able to operate that. And when I went into heavy writes, the drive immediately shot to 10.5 to 10.7 watts when I was going for just write operations. Now the Exos drive there was a pinch lower. It was about eight to just around the nine watt mark during idle. And when I had it with heavy write operations, it was quite comparable at 10.6 to 10.7 watts there. So that all adds up to about two and a bit times the power consumption in both standby and in full access there compared with the 4TB drive there from Seagate. Now, again, you would expect a larger drive to be more power consuming, but again, the more drive you're putting in, that power consumption is going to creep up a wee bit there. Also, you may be using a NAS system that has a low power delivery. Some Seagate Ironwolf drives, because they tend to have a slightly higher power draw than some other drives in the market, low powering systems can sometimes have difficulty with the back plane there supplying a lot of that power. Now, whether that is because the systems are being very meager or that the PCB for the back plane itself isn't great at power delivery, the ultimate um, point I'm making is if you're going to use big boy drives like these, have a big boy system with the right power delivery and power uh, PD management for this kind of drive media. Ultimately, it is tough to review these drives. I've just got them. I don't have enough for a large scale RAID array. I don't doubt that they're going to do what Seagate say. I think, again, we could talk about mean time between failure, let's not bother. Um, but when it comes to these drives here, what these represent is what a lot more interesting to me than the drives themselves. If you are looking for a big drive, yum yum in my tum, this is fantastic. And this is good news for those that have got larger four and 8K raw footage building up over time. But, Keep in mind, as I've said in previous videos, if you're gonna buy a big drive like this, you have gotta buy two at the very, very least. And even then, when you buy two, you're gonna lose half that capacity in your RAID or as a backup. So regardless, this is an expensive proposition and there is the potential that depending on your setup, a 30 TB drive might actually work out less financially sustainable than going for four 10 TB drives in the right rate configuration. The same goes for your backup and the same goes for your overall system when shaping it up. Do I like these drives? Yes. Do I like what they represent? Yes. Do I think they're for everyone? No. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to do more testing on these um, and hopefully we're going to get a couple more in so we can do some real testing with some 10G performance as well to see just how they stack up once we raid them together. And that will be linked in the description below in a written article over on NAS Compares. Now, if they are available for sale, because they're not right now, I can't tell you what the price is, then right now they'll be linked in the description. So if you found this video helpful and if you were going to buy these drives anyway, please use those links in order to do so. Result in a small commission, come here to NAS Compares, and it allows me and Eddie to keep doing what we do. And please, these exist. Are you though? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.